We're back in the studio and back with a brand new edition of Chart This. Gary Wagner will join me all the way from beautiful Hawaii. Stay tuned. Joining me now from Hawaii is Gary Wagner. Gary, thank you so much for being with me today. You're quite welcome. So good to see you again. So Gary, as I mentioned, it's been a while since we last spoke. And before back in the summer, we'd say watch for September, watch for a lot of activity this month. And so far, September has not disappointed. What is your general market sentiment right now, Gary? Yeah, there's no doubt we have had a fundamental change in the cadence, the way gold trades. And on a technical basis, I was looking for a certain price point before the market really would take off and run, which it actually did. But the wheels that were set in motion are this infinity to infinity and beyond. It's the fact that the QE3, the QE3 program implemented by Bernanke is open ended. And open ended to me means sustained rally in gold. Does it mean it's going to go straight up? I don't think so. In fact, I'm looking at 1800 as a potential point of a little bit of resistance. But overall, the numbers that we were looking at, which is 2000 plus in about six months, I think are just as valid today as when we looked at that initial data. Gary, might you not reevaluate those numbers higher, especially following the Fed statements these past few weeks? Well, what I have done on the insert today, today's lesson, I'm actually going to be giving a forecast for the end of this year, first quarter of next year. And I'm going to put a, a low target as well as a high target. So it's not so much that I have changed the numbers, but I'm looking at a, a broad base set of parameters and 2,500 on the top, 2,100 on the bottom. Still in that same area, it's still um, really, really, it sounds good to a gold bull. So what do you think will really be driving those numbers, Gary? Is it really the money printing? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fundamentals right now are absolutely in play for a sustained rally in gold, and mostly because the Fed right now has undertaken really to print a lot of money, but to do it in a very sustained way. First. Secondly, they're not concerned about inflation. In fact, I believe that they actually want to raise their target on what's acceptable. And of course, we all know that as inflation grows, so does the price of gold. My sense is that the wheels that were set in motion last week at the last FOMC meeting will really move um, gold and silver for the next six to eight months, if not longer. All right, so move upward for you for both gold and silver next six to eight months. On that note, Gary, what educational segment are you bringing to us today? Well, I'm going to do three things. It's, a, it's an extended video today. And what we're going to do is first take a look at the market in its current scenario. And I want to point out why we might see some sort of potential top and the fact that it's going to be a subtle or small correction. The uh, second thing that I really want to look at is a lesson that I find was a hard lesson for me to learn. And it's really to be able to objectively look at the data that you take in and to be able to be open enough that if you have new data, you're able to process it in a way where you're not holding on to your former beliefs. I think that's a really important lesson to learn. And then lastly is just some good technical stuff. All right, Gary, so let's get to the segment. You know, the Chinese have a saying, may you live in most interesting times. It's absolutely clear to me that that statement has as much validity and weight today as it probably did when it was first spoken. Traders, we absolutely have come out of our corrective period. We are back into a major impulse period. In other words, there's going to be, in my opinion, a substantial rally. And today's lecture is going to cover a couple of topics. We'll take an overview of the market. I also want to touch upon the correction and how technical traders need to always keep an open mind. And what I mean by that is when presented with compelling technical evidence, which is not in alignment with your current assumptions, you need to be open enough to really weigh the possibilities that in fact, what's unfolding is what you didn't originally perceive and run with it. If it wasn't for that, I could have really gotten this correction wrong. And so I do want to spend a moment on that. And then lastly, what I consider to be the really fun stuff, and that is we're going to do some forward forecasting at the end of this tutorial to give you an idea of my forecast for gold in the upcoming, call it six to eight months, into 2013. 
Now, before we get started with broad and general um, stroke, so to speak, I'd like to spend a couple of moments and tell you what I'm looking at and what I believe is a highly probable scenario in the upcoming week to two weeks. We've seen this tremendous, tremendous run in the market. In fact, if you recall, we talked about the fact that 1635 was a really critical area and that area was based upon a Fibonacci retracement of this major move and it was also based upon the fact of straightforward trend analysis. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at this marketplace as it came down, you can see these series of tops. In other words, this price void, this area that gold prices could not ascend above or through. I think you can also see very clearly that in fact, once the marketplace did break through this resistance area, you can see how the market, the timbre, the cadence of the market absolutely changed and we went right back into a Super Bowl run. As you can see here, as the market trades from these lows just above 1530, 1540 in that area to an intraday high of a, almost 1800. Now, back to what I believe our short-term, our short-term view of the market is. Long-term, I'm extremely bullish, and you'll hear where I think it's going to go towards the end of this broadcast, but I believe that it is quite possible at this point, after the market has on a couple of occasions tried to take and conquer 1800 and not been able to, I think that this is a very, very logical point to really look for a potential corrective wave. Of course, this would be a intermediate corrective wave. It's nothing substantial, but we've been long since 1636. So with my subscribers, we're going to probably look to pull profits if we see any kind of weakness below 1750. That's kind of where I have my line in the sand. And I'm recording this tutorial on Sunday, the 23rd. Now, as you can see, when we look at the activity, it is light, it has just started trading overseas, but we are getting some telltale signs of a potential top in the market. And what are they? To kind of illustrate what I'm looking at, and it's a, it's a candlestick pattern that we've talked about, we have identified on numerous occasions, but we are getting the beginnings of simply what's called a Three River Evening Star. Three River Evening Star is a candlestick pattern composed of three candles and a confirming candle. This, of course, is a weekly chart, and this is the beginning of our most current week. And for it to be a true Three River Evening Star, you would probably get a low something like this, the market would come and, and test back to the 1750, 1740 area, and then it would be these three candles here, our star, and our completion of our, candle, our pattern right in here. The confirming candle would be on the following week. You would get a lower low, a lower high, and it would have to be a red body candle. That would complete this pattern. And in terms of a candlestick signal, it would indicate that the market was probably headed lower. Now, what else is there that really has led me to believe that this is a very valid point to look for a potential correction. And let's go back to the first, first chart we were looking at. And this is straightforward trend analysis. When we simply draw a straight line or as straight as I can draw it from 1800, what you're going to see is that two prior occasions, this has been absolute resistance in the market. And as the market began to trade higher, you can see that for the first time with a red candle has formed and the prior week, although that prior week was very strong, it still gave us a doji. In other words, it made a higher high, but at the same time, it was a consolidating candle. It closed very, very near to the open. You can see that three rivers starting to form in here. And to me, that would be a logical place to look for our first correction. Now realize markets don't tend to go straight up or straight down. 
this particular major fifth that we're in right now is going to be composed of our first impulse, correction, impulse, correction, wave four, and then our final thrust or wave five. So what we're trying to really get a handle on is when is this first wave going to terminate? When are we going to go into a smaller correction? This is a logical place to look for it. Does it mean that it will actually come into being? Well, that's something only the future can tell us. But I will tell you this. This is going to be a technically tough area to break through in terms of the resistance that it has. But once it does, that's going to signal the move back to our recent all-time highs, which I believe on this third wave right in here, we will breach or at least challenge 1920 once again. The second thing that I want to cover today I think is of critical importance. I'm going to kind of run through it very, very quickly, but I think you'll see very, very easily how much trouble it can get you in if you are unable to be flexible in your basic market outlook and how devastating it can be if you get married to a position. This is what I'm talking about. As this marketplace came up and it hit our record top here in 1920, we went into a correction. Nothing that is a stretch of the imagination. Now, I had anticipated this correction to basically be a standard A, B, C correction terminating with the C wave either below the A or a flat which would be about equal. So when the market stalled right at about this point, in other words, my assumption was we had our ABC correction and it was a flat bottom. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now, we were fortunate in that because I thought the market was entering a new major fifth, we went long and we went long with a whole lot of enthusiasm. We made a lot of money as this market started trading higher, but when the market stalled at 1800, meaning we got this double top, I immediately knew that the assumptions I had made could not hold water anymore. Why? Because if it was truly an ABC correction, this particular set of waves needed to easily surpass the 1800 and begin to challenge the record high. And in fact, what we saw was a really long protracted marketplace which just had lower lows, lower highs, but interestingly enough, that 1520 right in that area, that seemed to hold. Now, it stayed there for the longest period of time. And I realized because I had spent so much time reading the original works of R.N. Elliott that the compression triangle that I've put up many times, let me go ahead and put that up again, has been etched in the back of my mind. And I realized that this was something that I was looking at that truly could be a definitive triangle correction first the second thing is that by looking at these series of bottoms right in or excuse me tops right in here i realized that as long as this market continued to trade and have a good base or support here it didn't have the ability at all to take out this area just above 1635 that is where I pulled that number for, from, and actually, I believe it was maybe uh, around August 10th, the chart this that we did talked about the fact that we were looking for a major breakout above 1635. This is where it comes from. My point is this. Had I been married to my position and not had the flexibility to reevaluate and to look at other alternatives, I could have sincerely missed the boat on this particular trade. I certainly would not have been able to position ourselves at such a nice point. We really nailed this particular breakout. And I can't say we. Technical analysis is a pristine mathematical art form. When done properly, the insight and the reward is ridiculous. And all I can say is traders always keep an open mind when you're looking at your current market analysis. And now for the fun stuff. The following is my forecast for gold prices 
through the end of 2012 into the first quarter of 2013. Based on the assumption, and we just talked about that, that assumption might have to change, but right now it is running very, very strong. We've completed our correction. We're back into a strong set of rallies. Those rallies will be composed of three very, very strong impulse waves to the upside. Now, the first and easiest technique of forecasting price is to simply compare wave one and do what is called a Fibonacci extension. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All I'm going to do is start from the beginning of wave one and take it to the top. And then I'm going to carry that over and line that up with our lows right in here and then kind of move this out a little bit. And I think that what you'll see is that in terms of strategic areas that we want to look at, these are the areas I think that are most likely going to be on the low side in terms of where gold prices go in the next six months. Now, all I've really done is cleaned it up a little bit and realize when we're doing Fibonacci extensions, what we are looking at is extending. So rather than looking at a 23%, we're looking at 100%, meaning wave one, wave five are equal. Second scenario, wave one, Compared to wave five, wave five is 1.23 times the length and 138, 1.38. My upper level, if we're doing a straight wave comparison, 2293, call it 2300, on the low side is about 2100. And that is basically saying that wave one and wave five are about equal. However, one thing has remained clear as we have studied gold, and that is that a lot of times wave five is the strongest of the three impulse wave. When we look at the intermediate on this major three, this is where we went parabolic and we rose, what, roughly $400. If that is the case, we wanna draw another extension, and this time, look at the extension on wave three as opposed to wave one. Let's go ahead and plot that. What you are looking at is the extension of wave three, comparing it to the beginning or the onset of wave five. And what you'll notice is this. If wave three and wave five are about equal, we're looking at 2300. If wave five exceeds wave three, say uh, 1.23, 1, 1 you're looking at about 24 to 2500. So traders, my longer term forecast, in other words, my forecast, for the entire major fifth wave on the low side, 2,200, high side, about 2,500. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, how long might this take? And for that, we have a technique that's simply known as Fibonacci time extensions. Let's go ahead and plot that. Now, for something like the time extensions, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if we look at the onset or the conclusion of the major third wave and then take a look at how long it took to complete our major fourth wave and label that as 100, typically what you look to do is to look at 161 and 200 as the points in which our next major fifth wave will take in terms of its completion. So based upon that, we are looking at this wave at least lasting throughout the year 2013, as you can see here. And that, my friends, is where I think we will see the market go to and approximately the time parameter could be at the beginning of 2013 as late as June of 2013. Fibonacci extensions and Fibonacci time cycles or extensions. I've got some really, really nice treats for you this week. First, I have an interview that I did uh, with Kerry Lutz, very, very interesting gentleman, very smart, very opinionated, but a very, very good interviewer. I uh, think that you'll enjoy kind of listening to that, and that's available. And then the other thing is, if 
time permits, we are thinking about doing a after show. If we are going to hit this corrective wave, where will that corrective wave go? And that's really what I want to talk about on this special video that is available at our website. You see the goldforecast.com, that's been available. Simply go to that URL and I have put up a screen print or the image that you'll see. There's a little green box. All you have to do is click it and then you'll get all of the treats that I spoke about. Gary, as always, informative and entertaining. Thank you so much. You're so very welcome. I, I just want to do a shout out to your Kitco viewers. You have some of the best, best viewers in, in, in the world, no doubt. And I'm just happy to be able to, to work with you and work with them. And hopefully it will make all of us better traders. Absolutely, Gary. I could not agree more. Best viewers in the world. On that note, Gary, you know I always have to ask you, is there more where this came from? And I always say there's always more in store. Thank you, Gary. I'd also like to remind our viewers that we will be in Toronto for the Cambridge House Show. We will be covering this conference. We'll be back in the studio next week, back with a brand new chart disc. Gary, we'll see you soon. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. And thanks for watching. You can email both Gary and I at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Camboni.